What's up YouTube? This is uh, Bert and I'm out on my first major ride on my new Suzuki GSS X8S. It's uh, kind of a mouthful to say, but uh, I bought the bike about a week ago and uh, then it proceeded to rain from the day that I bought it until uh, this past weekend. So I haven't really been able to take it out on anything other than a few laps around my block. So this is my first ride and I'm riding around in traction mode 3 and ride mode C. So it's uh, a little bit more tamed down throughout the power band on this while I get used to the bike. But uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty sick. The only other bike that I've had that's somewhat fast is a uh, 2020 KTM 690 and uh, that with a sumo set was pretty fun off on road but this seems to be a whole lot faster which I didn't expect. I have to say the bike is really smooth. Not a lot of buzz in the handlebars or the pegs. Nice bright TFT display. Daytime or nighttime, you can read it really well. I did take a short short ride the other night just to see, which is my technically my first ride to see how it actually was you know at nighttime with the headlight spread and everything like that and it it seems to be pretty good it is uh, Thanksgiving morning on in Florida on a uh, nice and chilly 51 degree morning which is uh, strange for Florida but I'm all bundled up nice with my climb winter gloves. And I'm checking out a, uh, a budget friendly jacket today. I bought a Built Blast 2 to try to keep me warm in the, the colder season instead of uh, my Baja S4 climb jacket or my Alpine Stars Tech Air. And so far, I like the jacket a lot. It's comfy, they have it in tall sizes. So, it works out for me. So I am a little bit over six foot two, almost six foot three with boots on. And this has me in a upright, nice and relaxed position uh, I have a uh, neck and back issue so I didn't want to be leaned over on a on a sport bike if I didn't have to and this kind of is the closest to an ADV type riding position man this thing is smooth so this is a new bike uh, I got it it had 20 miles on it. it appears that they allowed test drives or maybe the employees test ride it test rode the bike so it now has 51 miles on it now so far I've done a few things to it I've gotten some tech spec tank pads to protect the uh, tank and give you extra grip and then I did some paint protection film on the tank also that way this new tank bag doesn't scratch it up 
And then I also did the uh, Yashmira tail tidy to get rid of that hideous fender that comes on this thing. Not really sure what they were thinking when they were designing this bike or what the purpose is of the fender that looks like a third or fourth seat. But uh, that is now gone, which I'll show here shortly on a walk around of the bike. I had the option to get a 24 because the dealership that I had uh, purchased it from Sky Motorsports in Sanford, they had uh, 24s in stock, but the uh, 23s were marked down and I really dig the white with the blue accents, blue wheels. So that, I think most people that have I've seen online seem to have this color combination and I'm quite happy with that that style that coloring so I can say I do like the uh, quick shifter quite a lot it uh, is a lot better than the one that I had on the 690 Yeah, the 690 would do a weird thing like if you barely touch the uh, shift pedal it would cut fuel and the whole bike would fall on its face and if you were taking off fast trying to run the bike hard you'd barely touch it and it would like kill power and it felt like the bike was gonna you know fall over it got really unsettling But this is nice and smooth. I didn't think I would buy a sportier bike like this. But on a recent trip when we were uh, doing a cross Florida event. We were running through back roads that had some twisties here and there. On our way home. And it was like 150 miles and we were just... You know cooking along the three of us like hauling butt and it was just so much fun that I'm like ah you know maybe I do something who need something more streetable and when I saw this last year when they first announced it I, I was shocked that it looked like something out of a cyberpunk video game or something you know a GTA 5 mod that was a bird that almost uh, decided to hit me in the face that was strange but uh, when I started looking again in May for a bike I bought the CB500 because I wanted something to be able to chew up and still do adventure riding and it's a lot more approachable than you know most of the other adventure bikes the bike that I have, way I have set up weighs about 430 pounds has full rally rate suspension now so I love the bike but I just wanted something a little bit more street street friendly now that I have you know Motos Rouse tires on it they're really loud this is a little bit more quiet ride so the suspension does seem a little bit stiff but I'm you know comparing it to dual sports and dirt bikes and adventure bikes but uh, I'm about 195 pounds right now with gear on so I don't think I'm overweighting the suspension a lot the suspension on this is not adjustable except for the rear and just minor adjustments to to sag so I am basically going on a uh, little section of Lake County Florida called the Sugarloaf Mountain Ride and it has a little bit of twisties and country road scenery it's about the some of the best that you guess you can get in Florida. So 
So the bike is a, a little bit heavier than a lot of the naked bikes at 445 pounds fully fueled, but it doesn't feel like it at all. Like it, it feels so much lighter. And you get to hear the intake mod. Yeah. Oh man, this thing is so much fun. Yeah, so I watched another YouTuber, he, uh, I think it's like B-Cycle Nuts or something like that. And he bought one of these and he put it on the dyno recently, he pulled the foam filter and the snorkels. And it picked up and throughout the range of the power band, like three or four horsepower and then like one horsepower a week with that peak rather without doing anything on the on the factory tune so I'm like why not everybody always does in intake box mods and everything never seems to have any issues on the on the bikes with air fuel for basic stuff like that and it sounds the intake noise is intoxicating The exhaust is uh, nice sounding, but pretty quiet. Has a giant catalytic converter underneath the bike. And I do like the way the uh, Akrapovic and the Aero exhaust sounds if I'm trying to see if somebody's gonna come out with a, uh, a shorty exhaust, because I really do like the way the factory one looks. These are Florida hills, and it probably looks flat on the GoPro. That is the uh, scenic overlooking trailhead for Sugarloaf Mountain. You can see like three counties if you go out on the uh, walkway out there. That's pretty neat. We get to see a portion of Lake Apopka. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, these roads out here aren't the actual best, but for the most part, this bike seems to be soaking it up, all the little bumps and cracks and everything. I do, you know, research and look at the 790 and the 890 Dukes from KTM. I do love the way those bikes look and they make a lot more power, but I wanted uh, Japanese reliability. Suzuki's always been a fairly safe bet when it comes to reliability, so. And since I did have a 690 that had uh, a 
a lot of little gremlins going on with it. I figured I'll just, you know, take my chances with this bike. I'll probably have a much, much more reliable experience. It might not be as fast or as a more sporty of a bike, but I don't know. This thing looks really good. I love the way the headlights look. A lot of people don't like the stacked squares, but like I said, it reminds me of something like out of a out of Cyberpunk, the video game. Yeah, even a uh, low speed getting on and off the throttle, it's nice and smooth. It doesn't feel snatchy or grabby or anything like that. I heard it's uh, common with ride-by-wire systems on, on bikes, but uh, this one seems pretty smooth. I'm gonna stop and give it a nice walk around. It is a beautiful looking bike. My uh, Chase Harper bag, $60 bag off of Amazon. Super nice. Little paint protection film. Got my tech spec tank grips. And my sweet little uh, tail tidy with the uh, scheme safety lights. Those are made by Cyclops because I have a horrible luck with people trying to run into the back of me in vehicles. So the last thing I want to happen is have it happen on the uh, any of the motorcycles that I have. She is a beaut. Sounds pretty darn good for stock exhaust. All right. I am just uh, a normal dude giving my opinion on a bike that I paid for myself. Uh, there's lots of other reviews that go over all the different specs of the bike. Now I do notice that at slower speeds, not op open full throttle, that the quick shifter is a little bit chunky. A little bit harder on the shifts. Where when you're more than half throttle or more, it just blips through nice and smooth. But I seem to remember that being the case in the KTM also. That's my reference for quick shifters. I've never ridden any other bike that had one, so. I am definitely happy with my decision. I did not test drive it myself. I went in blind just based off of watching tons of reviews on the bike. I went and checked out the bike. <clears throat> Loved the way it looked in person. And then uh, I sold my 2019 CR250L and then uh, the next day I went and bought this. So this, could, this was a replacement bike for the 250 for now because I only really need two bikes for now. Everybody else that says I only need one bike and then end up with two. 
And then they say, oh, I only need two bikes. And then they end up with three. It's like an illness. But, uh, yeah. It is uh, much better than any other illness, that's for sure. It's cheaper than my old car illness. You end up with, you know, twenty or thirty thousand dollars in a fifty thousand dollar car. I can buy and build out multiple bikes and still be way cheaper than that would ever be. So. Lots of police activity today. So the seat's fairly comfortable. Uh, it doesn't feel like a piece of cardboard like a lot of the dual sports and dirt bikes. Uh, so far, no, no numbness or anything. It may just be as comfortable of a stock seat that I've ever sat on. It feels just as comfortable as my uh, seat concepts on my CB500X. So. I don't know how long that lasts. My hands are getting a little bit chilly. No wind protection on my hands. I guess it'll do that. Merry Christmas. All right, Cobblestone Road. It doesn't technically feel like I'm going to lose all my feelings. But it is rather bumpy. Yeah, definitely can feel this in your handlebars. I don't know if you heard, but it's uh, beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. Beautiful Winter Garden, Florida, downtown. And also, downtown, beautiful Winter Garden. <laughs> Now that I got a new battery in, left on my ride earlier and uh, totally didn't pack batteries. So once the battery died, I couldn't film anymore. So now I'm going to go out and do a quick run and get on the highway and see how this thing does on the highway. And off we go. Let's see how it does on the on-ramp. Gotta break it in. 
first before I get to ride it hard. Yeah, definitely a lot of uh, wind on your body. Nice and smooth ride. It doesn't feel like the bike wants to move around a lot. I love it. It's nice. Fourth gear roll. Yeah, it's really hard not to go. I want to go really, really fast on this bike. It just feels so easy to break all the laws and speed limits. It definitely feels like a proper Hoonigan bike. That would be nice to have cruise control on this. Yeah, I think there's a company that makes a throttle knock lock for it that goes on the bar and that looks pretty nice. I might end up getting one of those to try out. They make it for this and the uh, Beastrum 800DE. At least be able to shake your hand off whenever you need. I think I've got a pretty nice ride in today. Nice, comfortable. Looks like I'm going to need fuel soon. She does like to eat fuel. She's a thirsty gal. But uh, if you're on the fence and haven't had a chance, you should go take one of these things for a spin if you can find a dealership that allows test rides. This thing is uh, a lot of fun and uh, pretty much fits all, all size. Size people with the approachable seat height and then without any modifications, lowered pegs or anything like that, I actually fit pretty well on it at my height so uh thanks for watching like and subscribe and uh hopefully i'll have some more content on this bike in the future Peace.